We're about to see the hardest hitting boxer in history meet the hardest man to hit in the heavyweight division for the second time. Both men should have won the last fight and either could win the next. Anticipation is astronomical. But as much as we look forward to a classic, there's every chance that we get a plotting result that satisfies no one. The adjustments fighters make between bouts can nullify all of the action of the first meet. Obviously, Marcos Maidana didn't beat Floyd Mayweather the first time they fought, but boy, he came close. He landed more shots on the best defensive boxer in recent memory than any other fighter in his career. Where most had expected Mayweather to waltz past Maidana with his usual slick aplomb, Instead, the Argentinian dragged Floyd into a war. Mayweather still walked away with a majority decision, but it was enough to book Maidana a rematch. Many of the millions who bought Floyd Mayweather pay-per-views did so to see him beaten. And in Marcos Maidana, they believed they had found someone who could do just that. All he needed was to build on the strong start he'd shown in the first fight. Yeah, just like you said, I have 12 more rounds to finish the job. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to win. I'm well prepared, and Mayweather isn't what everybody thinks he is. But where Floyd had been surprised by Maidana's aggression the first time, in the rematch, he was prepared. He danced around his opponent, putting on the kind of defensive masterclass everyone had expected last time. Maidana was both less aggressive and less accurate. In the first fight, he'd landed more than a quarter of his 858 punches. In the second fight, he managed less than a quarter of his 572. The judges gave Mayweather a deserved unanimous decision. Marcos Maidana was relegated to boxing second tier again, and fans were left to be disappointed by Mayweather fights for years to come. When Canelo Alvarez and Gennady Golovkin first met, Golovkin was an undefeated three-belt champion looking to break Bernard Hopkins' title defense record. Canelo Alvarez was the ring and lineal champ and the other most popular fighter in the division. The winner was destined to be named the best middleweight in the world and become one of the biggest boxing celebrities since Floyd Mayweather. It was a flying cow of high stakes. The problem was that after 12 tense, hotly contested rounds, there was no winner. Despite many calling the fight for Golovkin, the fight was called a split draw. Triple G was pissed. This is terrible for sport, for boxing. You know, I'm a champion. This is biggest fight for, for boxing. You know, if these Dodgers, you know, like, like today, this is terrible. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Alvarez eating some steroid-filled beef put the rematch on hold for a year. By the time the event rolled around, Golovkin had been stripped of one of his titles. But otherwise, it was essentially round 13 of the same fight. After another 12 more rounds, it was still hard to pick. Alvarez had been more aggressive, but the majority of viewers had either scored it to Golovkin or giving yet another draw. The judges, however, managed to hand Canelo a majority decision by a single round. Whether you think he deserved it or not, no one could argue that we never definitively found out which man was the better boxer. But the win has so far been enough for Canelo to move on and ignore any attempts by Golovkin to get a third go round. And how can we not finish with last year's rematch between Anthony Joshua and Andy Ruiz Jr.? Their first meeting had been one of the most exciting clashes in recent memory. It had everything. A slick champion, an overlooked underdog with an unassuming physique, both fighters hitting the canvas in the third round, the champ's desperate attempt to stay in the fight, and finally, the last-minute challenger taking the belts in shocking fashion. The rematch had more question marks than a Riddler costume. Was Anthony Joshua overrated? Could Andy Ruiz be the best boxer in the heavyweight division? Would we discover that Snickers bars were performance enhancing? The setting was Diria, Saudi Arabia, a custom-built stadium for 15,000 fans. And there, under the bright Saudi lights, Anthony Joshua answered all of those questions with an emphatic no. 
Ruiz had ruined the spectacle by turning up unprepared, while Joshua was content to keep the shorter man at range and box him up from distance. It was like watching AJ do his taxes, safe, necessary, and dull. The anticipation for Wilder Fury 2 is huge, and you'd have to be dead to not be excited by the fight's potential. But it would be best to savor the feeling now. There's a chance this may be as good as it gets. Thanks for watching, and remember, if you want more fight sports in your life, just hit the subscribe button.